this video we're going to talk about um, open sets and neighborhoods. So what's the setup? Let x be a set and let's let t be its apology so that together x and t give you a topological space. And just so we're all on the same page, what's the topology? So recall that t is a subset of the power set of x. So this 2 dx is one notation for the power set, or maybe you're comfortable with like fancy p of x. Anyway, so t, you know, a collection of subsets of x, is a topology if the following. So the empty set and x have to be included in t. Number two, if you had any collection of things in t, then the union of those things also has to be in t. And if you had uh, finitely many elements of t, so if you're given a handful of subsets of x, then the intersection of those also has to be uh, in t as well. So these are the axioms for a topology. You probably remember that. And remember that we're just going to say a subset of x is open if it's an element of this t that we picked out. So to give an example, just so we're all on the same page again, let's say x is the set ABC, and let's say t is the topology that has the empty set, uh, just the singleton A, the two points A and B, and then the whole, the whole set X. So the open sets, again, they're just the things that are in T. And you can think about why, why does this T satisfy the blue properties above. Maybe check it out, make sure it does. But anyway, just the things, the subsets that are in T are just what we're going to describe as open. So that's just how we're using that adjective. So here's kind of the new definition. So that should be old news if you've made it this far. So the new definition is if you're given a point in your topological space, you're given a point in little x, then a subset n of x is called a neighborhood of little x if n contains an open set that contains x. So let's try to do an example that spells out what's going on with this orange definition of a neighborhood. So let's say I've got the same set x above and I've got this topology. So consider just the point A. So then if I took the subset of x that would, that's just a and c together, that's a neighborhood of a. So why is it a neighborhood of a? Just to demonstrate what's the definition above trying to say, well, the singleton a is certainly contained in n. Uh, and in other words, what do we got? That singleton a, it's part of my topology, right? It's part of my blue set. So that's an open set that contains little a as an element, and it's also completely contained inside of n. So we have, uh, we've shown that n satisfies that definition above. So what are some things that we want to notice? There's two things that I want to notice. The first thing is that neighborhoods themselves don't necessarily have to be open. So again, the n we just saw above, a comma c, is not an element of the topology. So that's a neighborhood of a that's not open. So neighborhoods don't have to be open. And the other thing, if n is a neighborhood of x, then that means that you should always be able to find an open set in t such that x is an o, and O is completely contained inside of N. So that's what the two things just demonstrated above. And what this also suggests to us is that that O that you found, that's also a neighborhood of X. And so maybe why is that true? Well, O is a subset of itself, so it satisfies our orange definition of a neighborhood. So some books are going to call O an open neighborhood of X. So like they'll try to distinguish to tell you like, okay, neighborhood can be open or not open, right? doesn't matter. It's a little bit general, but then we might care about the open neighborhoods of a point X. So some books will distinguish. So here's kind of the big picture again. Again, for a particular point in your topological space, neighborhoods of X, they can just be any subset that contains X as long as that subset contains an open set <laughs> that contains X. So there's neighborhoods of X and then there's open sets that contain X. So what's my picture trying to say? The open sets that contain X are certainly neighborhoods, but not all neighborhoods have to be open. So let's do another example. Let's say X is the real line and T is the usual topology. Think about like college algebra um, where you have parentheses on both sides of your interval. And so the things that are open are anything that you can make where you're taking any union you want of those intervals, or uh, maybe finitely many intersections of those intervals. And so let's just take zero, x is zero, and let's look at the interval, close brackets, minus one to one, I mean all real numbers between minus one to one inclusive, that's a perfectly fine neighborhood of the point zero. So how come? Well, just to demonstrate it, all you need to be able to do is just find some open set that's completely contained inside the orange that also contains my point. So why don't I just take the endpoints off? So minus one to one is open in the usual topology on the real line, and that contains zero. And again, like I just said, that open set is completely contained inside of n. So that's why we can say that n is a neighborhood of zero. And just again to, to uh, 
go along with what I was saying above, you might call the green interval minus one to one an open neighborhood of zero. So let's look at a theorem here. Let's say we've got a topological space X in topology T. Then O is in T. So in other words, a set is open if and only if O is a neighborhood of each of its points. So this will be a good way to characterize what it means for a set to be open in a topological space. So there's this connection between neighborhoods and uh, open sets. Open sets are in some sense special kinds of neighborhoods. So what's the proof of this look like? So we've got an if and only if, we gotta go both ways. So let's go the forward direction. Let's suppose that O is in T. So let's suppose O is an open set. Let's let X be an X. And we need to show, I'm sorry, I should actually let X be an O. Uh, so let's change that right now. That should be an O right there. And we need to show that, uh, that O is a neighborhood of this particular X. All right, so then X is an O, which is contained in itself. And so that shows that O is a neighborhood of X, right? So O itself contains some open set. Remember, we assumed O is in the topology. That was kind of the easy direction. So let's go the other way. So suppose that O is a neighborhood of each of its points. So for each element of O, there should exist some open set. We'll call it O with a subscript X, right? So maybe I need a different open set for a particular element X. In other words, maybe, maybe the same O won't work for each element, but the point is for each element, you could find an open set. So I've got O sub X here that's open such that X is in O sub X. And O sub X is contained in O. So that's just using our definition, our orange definition from above about neighborhoods. You might rewind in case you forgot that. So think about well, how, how is O related to each of these OXs? So each of these OXs is completely contained inside of O, but then also every single point of O is in one of these OXs. So you should think about O itself should be the same thing as you get as the union of all the OXs together. And why is that great? Well, each of the OXs is in T and T is a topology. Therefore, any union of things in T is also in T. So this union belongs in T and what you've just shown is that O itself is in T. So that shows that O is open.